This is Michael. You're listening to Tuzaman Podcast with Ram Zilech. God bless. Shalom. Hi. Hello. Welcome, everybody. This is the second episode of Tuzaman, the Ram Zilech Podcast. And today, a very special guest. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Michael. <laughs> Which remind me, the, the non-ending take, takeoffs that we had at El Naz Kitchen. I don't remember what was the video that we tried to, to take, but I... It was a fundraiser for getting a haircut to Michael. Mm. Uh, hi, I'm Michael. <laughs> No, that started with the, uh, um, wasn't it an interview or something? Sort of. Would, that wasn't an interview. When we were in, um, in 2015, I was were on tour in Germany with the band Langtunes. And uh, we toured in November. And one of the clubs was one of the first venues that Rammstein toured at. The Barentreffen, Gal? Was that it? I have no idea. You don't remember? And I, before the the actual performance, we've had like a Q&A, like an interview with the audience. And when we did the interview, we just, we we had, we said, we, we got to bring Mikey on board with us. We, we, we need him there. <laughs> and he was like, I'm, uh, my name is Gal, I play Kalimunet, I'm from Israel. And then, and then Mikey just grabbed the mic and was like, this is Michael. <laughs> I am Michael. And that was the best moment of our lives. <laughs> so for, for anybody who, who doesn't know who Michael is, Michael uh, basically joined Ramzalech, joined us on the road, on tour, and helped us uh, fill in the void for our OG bass player, Michael Guy. And like every good band that consists of session players and working musicians, it was a band band, but we still needed subs. So Michael, your first show with Ramzalech, do you remember it? It was in, in China. That's right. In Shanghai. In Shanghai. I remember we took a really long flight. I believe, Amit, you were in the middle, and I was on the window. <laughs> and I, I brought a lot of scones with me. Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, I actually remember that as me sitting by the window. You were by the aisle, no, and the no, lady no. giving us the scones in the middle. Are you kidding me? You're, you're just joking, aren't you? No. She, she was said- on the aisle because I had to pee a lot. As I do a lot on airplanes. On flights to China. Yeah. And then, and then we went from that long flight to a sound check. Do you remember that? I, re- I remember her taking that scone and being like, mm, and we thought she's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> but she liked it. Yeah. And then she told us she saw Miles Davis' electric band. That's right. What a lady. What a lady. So, yeah, after that flight we took a two-hour bus and had our first sound check yeah and that was that was your first time actually meeting the band right uh no gal and i met in uh in new york ah uh, do you remember that we had tea together ah uh, no 2012 with tal yes february it was freezing like hell amit was in israel and amit was upset that the only time of the year when he came to israel and we should make music i'm going to the states But I never got there back since. <laughs> yep. So. It was snowy. Yeah, you got sick. No, you and Tal had to go to the ER. Yeah, because of me. I, I brought it from Israel, to be honest. <laughs> and here we are. COVID vibes. Exactly. So, Mikey, how, how have you been? I've been great. Okay. Okay. How have you been? Uh, let me ask you two, how did you meet? In 2011, I think, you, you two met. So, how did you meet? We both met at New School. We were both going to New School. We met on the first day, I believe. Amit had a um, very obscure, interesting facial hair. <laughs> kind of like this, like like Derek Jeter type thing, you know, like that baseball player from the Yankees. Uh, 
and and I was very skeptical at first to even approach him, but it was it was when I first heard him play guitar, and I also needed a new guitarist for my band at that time, so I was kind of looking for a new guitarist, and Amit and I were kind of the only ones in that uh, in that group of like whatever twenty people that liked uh, John Zorn and kind of different music than just jazz Mm -hmm. so we started playing i think it was like every friday or something do you remember that probably yeah (laughs) and um and then we fell in love uh it was love in first sight with each other's playing with each other's playing and and uh character i would also say that it took us like five minutes once we started talking to realize like i get along with this guy (laughs) <laughs> he's cool you know he's cool he's he's like me he's strong we have the similar physique and stuff like that uh i remember uh grabbing a coffee at the time i must have used milk as a creamer uh i would use uh soy in later years and almond but the point is actually when what you're talking about us playing every friday when me and God went to high school together, we played in a in a Dixieland band. I played the banjo, not by choice, and uh, God played the clarinet. Yeah. And we would play every Friday. <laughs> and on Friday, you know, like everyone in, in school would be done by like, you know, noon. Twelve. Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. And we would all stay, just like the six of us there in the band, and stay for the Dixie band. <laughs> And as as bizarre as it was, it actually gave us uh, musical discipline. A very important lesson. Yes. You know. Of 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 paying. Yeah, we paid with something that we like, kind of yeah, we pay by the fact that we lost the the free time with all the guys that went to the to the city center or something like this. The famous city center. Also, Gal, are you wearing a fender shirt? Uh, yes. <laughs> How? This is a long story. Okay. We, we'll keep it. We'll keep it in the long box. Okay. So But this is a, a, a bass fender. A fender bass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Mikey, uh, today, now that you're not touring with Ram Zeilich, you're home in New York. Yes. You're doing all right? You're okay? Uh, at this moment... Okay, yeah. At this moment, okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, and it's been just about two months of uh, lockdown here in New York, right? Yeah. Wow. That's right. We, you were the last person I saw, I mean, do you know that? <laughs> I've, I've heard that from, uh, from another friend of ours that, uh, that was his last hummus. Wow. Yeah. The last time he hugged a person was then, two months ago. That's right. I would say the upside is we've, we've made it. We've, we've done two months. Yeah. Which is a lot. So, Mikey, you're also playing bass with some other people. You want to you wanna give them a shout real quick? Yeah. So I play bass and, I guess, produce, musical direct, this guy, Emdu Mokhtar from Agadez, Niger. Um, and also uh, Steve Gunn and um, this... Another Israeli, Yonatan Gat. Gat? Gat, from Monotonics. Mm. And some other people I can't really remember. I can't remember my name. No, that's a lot of people. That's good. Uh, and you just finished uh, working on the new Amdu album, right? I have, yeah, I did. We just finished. We're finalizing everything now. And you had to be on the road? Uh, during corona times you had to cancel tour yeah we had to cancel tour we were supposed to start mid march and supposed to end uh end of april so it's supposed to be like six weeks of tour and of course we canceled that uh it was very you know when when that was all happening it was every two hours it was like should we do this should we not do this and mm-hmm. glad glad we decided not to mm-hmm And, uh, yeah, so we had that tour canceled. We were supposed to go to, on tour in June, 
which was canceled. I was supposed to go on another tour in May. And then, uh, and then we were supposed to go on tour in September, October. But who knows? Who knows? Yeah, right now, nobody knows, right? We're waiting basically for 2021 to kind of start the, yeah. the touring again. And Mikey, do you think... It's like, I want to ask something about, the, about you and Ramzailach. If Ramzailach was something that challenged you, if the sound of Ramzailach was something that knew for you. Uh, and the third question in this group of one question will be, uh, do you think that you're using the same sound, same costume sound, the same say that you're trying to say? I think I was asking if... You think there's a change in your sound, not just as a bass player, maybe as a musician, and what you're bringing to the table as, a, as someone just tagging along on tour as a temporary member versus a, a producer in a band where you are now. Yeah, well, I, I guess bringing to Ram Zilech was uh, not just the um, already sculpted bass lines, more or less, but the sound uh and pedals and stuff that i'm interested in and i was interested in at that time um i do think that there was a commonality between kind of melodies that you all wrote with ramzal and kind of like uh the group that i lead laranosaurus and some other projects around that kind of the Eastern European Jewish music or whatever you want to call it um, yeah yeah so I think being familiar with that kind of style more or less was um, a beneficial thing to kind of have in my back pocket when touring with you all definitely I, I think it was such a smooth transition and everyone was so happy because as you said nobody you Uh, besides Gala and myself, nobody met you before prior to that, let alone play with you. We met, we met on soundcheck on stage. A very um, weird soundcheck, one might say. If you remember, we soundchecked at like midnight until 2 a.m, something like that. It was the first weird ch- soundcheck in a series of weird soundchecks. Yeah, yeah, it was a whole, <laughs> it was a package. That was the easiest soundtrack of the, of the package, I, I felt. Uh, yeah, yeah, I actually remember during the last soundchecks, first of all, the last soundcheck on that tour was two minutes. We played, with, uh, we played at the Mercedes-Benz Arena, but in the small room, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which is called like the mixing lounge or something. And we played with the incredible group from uh, Poland, Kroke. Kroke. It was almost a th- thousand people in this room. It's, it's not that one. Yeah, it was one of, one of my career's highlights. Just playing with them, because we played a track together. Yeah. We played Kokosh Tune, but the, the sound check was like three hours of nothing working, and then like two minutes of like, okay, it's on. There was another sound check where Gal... had like a, the stage had a hole there in the middle you remember that guy it was a hole it was one big squared hole in the center where where they want me to stand and I remember a guy like in the in the mic freaking out yeah like into the house you know in the PA going like man I can't walk like this man <laughs> I, you know there's I guess two of my favorite memories in uh, with on tour <laughs> with you all on stage was yeah There's one because you all are on wireless <laughs> yeah. and hold the guitar player. I remember I think we we're in Frankfurt and there's like another show going on next yeah. door. Yeah. And at some point he just left to go to that other show, but he yeah. was still playing. Yeah. Or I think on that same tour, different different city, he went downstairs to eat. Yeah. <laughs> wow, we were playing. In uh, I'll tell you in Wiesbaden. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There was an encore. And he was two, three minutes late because uh, the, the room downstairs is soundproof. So he couldn't hear anybody. And he just went there with his guitar and just started eating. Where is everybody? Where is it? It was amazing. While we're playing. He's eating while we're playing. Absolutely. But then, there, then my last, I guess there was all good memories. But another good one was, um, I think I overheard this, but I, a me, uh, 
<laughs> Gal went up to a meet. I think a meet you were on the side of the stage I was standing on. Uh-huh. And Gal, you whispered, <laughs> I'm wearing your socks. Absolutely. <laughs> I, that, was that with you, Mikey? I'm not sure. That was in Berlin, <laughs> in Cafe Burger. And uh, Gal, before the show, was like, I can't find my socks. I want socks. He took my socks without asking. He opened my suitcase. And while we're playing, he's just like, you know, he's, he's whispering over in my ear, I'm wearing your socks. <laughs> and then he wanted to give them back. And he was only dancing with his socks. It's not like he was wearing shoes on, you know. He just like trashed my socks all together. Do you remember that? No. <laughs> Amazing. You don't remember that. Good times, good man. One. Really good times. Back to that show in China with the with with the cushion. Yeah, I remember that. This is I think this is the only Israeli politics issue that I had witnessed to. Uh, there was some guy went and and he asked us, "Are you from Israel?" And we were, he asked Mikey. And he asked yeah. Mikey. <laughs> oh yeah. And that's about, I'm not from Israel. <laughs> oh yeah, it was kind of an aggressive question too. Yeah. And I, uh, I, th- I said, no, of course, I'm not. You, you took the easy way out. Yeah. Do you remember that one backstage where we found the, um, the uh, helmets, the, the construction helmets? The same, that's the same gig. Same so show. That's, same show, right? That's what I want. Yeah. So we'll just say it very quickly. Being Israeli musicians, one of the only countries that are still going to be like protested against. And there's a whole organization called the BDS, and specifically with the music, the BDSM. <laughs> and they, they basically protest against uh, Israeli performers across the world. Although I would say Ramzalich is the least... Uh, uh, yeah, I would say like a, a bunch of like, guys, half Ashkenazi, half Sephardic, singing in Yiddish and playing Arab music with klezmer is, is not their biggest problem. But that show was with helmets. Because of the hole in the stage, the crew had helmets. We picked those helmets, and that was our diva moment. We all bumped heads before we went on stage, <laughs> and we played with helmets. Yeah. For uh, probably me and Mikey wearing it like two songs longer than everybody else. That was amazing. I still have the videos from that. That was great. That, that was like, yeah, very nice. Skipping forward. Yes. The year is 2015, and Mikey... joining us in Germany for this uh, the secret handshake the secret handshake tour uh, it was one of the tedious tours that Ram I had and Mike was cool with everything in a weird uh, almost lockdown yeah in Hamburg two bands together in one room one toilet 12 people <laughs> I never thought of any Rams Alec tours as hard tours by the way Or tedious tours I think uh, and this is not like one of those mushy moments but it's more of like it's it was such a notch up from the touring that I've done prior to those Ram Zilek tours like DIY more punk tours sleeping on floors um, three dudes to one bed you know what I'm saying to me oh that sounds crazy what, what band was that <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly people not showering um, oh but wow. that's cool I know that's fine. We all didn't shower. We made it. Yeah, but so I don't I, those were like definitely like a notch up. like the f- whatever 15 people to one room and one toilet. Yeah, that's nothing. That's nothing. I, I actually remember when we played uh, Czech Republic with Ramzalich. We stopped at uh, the supermarket in Czech Republic. I thought about it. Also. It's like where we would stop when we were touring with Larry Nasseris, and we would get like these. Uh, it was a Lidl. You remember those supermarkets? Yeah. We have those here. <laughs> and we got a, a vegan spread, which is like a, a plastic sausage. You squeeze it out like a huge pimple, and you put it on your bread. And I remember like we were doing that for breakfast for like a whole month with Rhino. You know, each guy counting his slices of bread like in prison or something. And then I showed it to Omzalek and I was like, here, you want a bite? And they were looking at me like, what the hell is that? You know what he even wanted to look at? That, that was a, a pivotal moment. And I would say both of these touring experiences with Omzalek and with Larry Nasseris were kind of like life defying, you know, as a musician. You, you definitely get your chops from, from tours like that. Um, and you were saying, Michael, like, I think the past two, three years you've been touring extensively, right? With Emdu. Yeah. 
last year, 2019, we played over 200 shows, and that's wow. just with MDU. Wow. And then I did a few other tours in between that. Wow. But yeah, definitely, uh, definitely one of those things. I remember, so we fin- it was from December 2018 to December 2019. Wow. And the last tour we had was in Europe. I was flying back, I guess, from Copenhagen. And that, uh, I'm... I'm not usually into flights, but that flight was so blissful to be like having that feeling of coming home and being able to rest for what would have been a few months, but now is longer than that. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, But yeah, it was, it was a lot of touring, but then Amit, do you remember we toured, it was 2013 and we did not, not 200 shows, but we did like over like 120 shows that year do you remember that absolutely yeah with rhino totally we did our first full u.s tour that's right which if anyone's listening i highly recommend driving across the united states it's the only way to to really get to the 50 states (laughs) that and yeah you get to see some really beautiful places and people and people that's right yeah that that was actually my like initiation to the to the states. That's right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it was my first time in a lot of those places. Uh, New Orleans, Texas, maybe. I think my first time in Texas as well was with Rhino. Cool. In Super Happy Funland. You remember that venue? Yeah, in Houston. They gave us uh, fried jalapenos and um, Mountain Dew and a vegan pizza. <laughs> Magical. Yeah. <laughs> It's a question for both uh, Michael and Gal. You guys miss touring right now, or you think it's just like a nostalgic kind of like a reflex? I had less tour experience, so basically I miss stage and communicating with crowd, uh, and the other fun part of uh, of playing music to people. I really miss the the feedback. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm missing the feedback from people that that smuggle their their look to you, and you in in millisecond you can catch their uh, their state of mind in the same moment. Like if they are sad because just playing something very touchy, or if they are happy with your music and want to dance. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Same here. I think uh, when this all started. And knowing that I didn't have to go back on the road for a few months, it was a little bit of an excitement. And then a month into it, I definitely felt the, you know, I miss connecting with people and, um, you know, playing music and in front of people. And, and I think MDU specifically is a good example of um, the the crowd audience, the crowd and the, and the performer connect shin because it's it's so energetic music and it they really feed off of each other and having that every night of connecting with people on stage and off stage is is something that I really do miss and it's sad that you know it won't be a it won't happen for a while or who knows when I had first rehearsal last Thursday and uh, with the guys at the Gassen and it was you actually, it, it was like first day at school in some, in some moment. Yeah. That, yeah, that moment of, of being able to play with another musician again is going to be really fun without like a screen in front yeah. of us or a recording. And you had, you had this du- dust layer yeah. of, of not, not necessarily uh, not being in shape, but the uh, dust of not playing with someone for a long time. Yeah, almost like a social skill you got to get back as a musician. What about you, Amit? Um, I think we all kind of did, uh, I mean, me and, and Michael and uh, Gal and I, we both did uh, some online collaborations. Well, we got this podcast now as well. And I, I'm kind of sick of seeing like people playing into screens, mm-hmm. right? Split screens. Split screens. That's not my scene anymore. It doesn't make me happy. 
um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm 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 happy recording. It's one thing. Recording is always fun. I can't see it, but oh, Mikey, Mikey is drawing a heart. Uh. But yeah, it's 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 also trying to use this time, you know, finishing all those tracks he wanted to mix like for for two hundred years now. It's something. Um, Mikey, how, how are the guys in the Amdu camp? Are they bored or are they? Yeah, I mean, there there was like that fright at the beginning. It was like probably delayed like three weeks from when we in the U.S. started quarantining. And um, there was a fear. And then in two weeks, everyone's just back doing the same stuff. There's definitely less cases there, too. So it's not it's not as uh it's contained somewhat yeah i mean they stopped all the buses between each um region even uh Sheva? exactly <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah everyone's okay how do you how do you both feel like you can create at this time do you feel inspired to or i think uh, i mean let me talk about it uh last podcast as we began the the chit chat but as for me it's like a, the scenario here is that that i have a little kid at home and i really began this cor- corona thing with a lot of worries about now when all weddings canceled or at least delayed and all the non-weddings gigs are definitely canceled so it was quite tough it's actually forced me to reinvent myself and it took me like a week or two to think what exactly i'm going to do and in my case i i put more focus on the studies at the, the bachelor that i'm doing and happily and joyfully i did some stuff musically and uh, i'm going to do a lecture about klezmer in two days from now and, and hopefully till the end of my I'll be calm economically. The, the the positive side was that you don't need to get anything from the outside. You can food all day, make your food, make clean for yourself. It's it it was something uh, quite refreshing. Uh, this is the positive side of of this strange lockdown. We're about to kind of uh, <laughs> wrap it up here. So I just thought okay. about um, buddy. So I'll I'll tell Gal a story from a rhino tour. It usually gets Mikey. Laughing pretty hard. I think I know what you're about to say. I believe that was, it was definitely in Germany. In Halle. Yes, we were in Halle. And um, we stayed with a guy called Matthias. A lovely, lovely promoter. Uh, who let us not only play, but also took care of us and put us at his place. And in Halle, although it's a peaceful, picturesque town, it's adjacent to a prison. And we later discovered that sometimes people would just like escape prison and start, you know, hanging out in Halle. So <laughs> ah. um, it was the day after the performance. We were at, at Matthias's place. We were outside just hanging out. And I was like, okay, I got to go to the bathroom. I went upstairs. I went to his house. I'm going to the bathroom. I see like a guy as I'm walking in. I'm passing him. And I'm like, hi, how's it going? And, you know, I'm going to the bathroom, doing my thing, walking out. I mean, like, Cheers. How are you, man? walking out and then he's looking at me and he goes like who are you in german looking like really stirred up also just to put it in perspective this is a month into tour my beard is but right. also if i may interject real quick this this please, is a please. this is a house with multiple floors that <laughs> matthias lives on the bottom and then some other folks live on the top but i think it was on the same floor oh well this is awkward and uh the guy's like was basically like what are you doing here and i was like oh i'm a I'm with Matthias. <laughs> and he just looks at me and goes like, das ist nicht Matthias. <laughs> so I, I basically went to somebody else's house and used his bathroom and we're like, How's, hey, how are you? <laughs> Good times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Nice. Dude. Hi, Goni. Oh, my gosh. Hi, Goni. Goni is here with us. Mikey, he wants to see you. <laughs> oh, cheeky, <jiggy>, cheeky. <laughs> so I'll mention that I've been privileged to play with uh, with Rhino. That's right. Yeah, both of y'all. Yeah, with Colton. We want to thank Mikey again for joining us. Well, thanks, y'all, for having me. You can listen to Mikey playing with Andrew Mokhtar and with Steve Gunn 
and Larry Nasseris, and with us in Rab Zeilich. And he's also got a solo project called uh, Colton, right? That's right. And uh, Gal is doing lectures now, right? In two days, yeah, I'm preparing it. Uh, it, will have, it will take part on Tuesday. And people can check it out on, on your Instagram and on your site and on your Facebook? Yeah, yeah. Galkline.com, and it's in there. What else? Remzaidech, we're going to upload soon the second album also to the Bandcamp. Tuzaman is going to be on Bandcamp, inshallah. Inshallah. Hope everyone is safe. This is it for now for the Tuzaman Podcast Episode 2. And I think, Mikey, who, who would you take as a guest? For the next one? I, I, I have one name in mind. There's not even a question. I would take Hode. Exactly. Gal, what do you think? <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We'll see if we can do that. Thank you all for listening. It's been a pleasure. Take care. Toda rabba. Thank you.